Another element that's going to be uh, electronic is that you're going to provide the beneficiary with a written or electronic copy of the care plan and document uh, its provision in, in the uh, electronic medical record. The, the last item requiring the, the, the use of the certified EHR that, the, is that uh, manage your management of care transitions uh, between and among healthcare providers and settings, including referrals to other clinicians, uh, follow-up after an emergency uh, department visit, and follow-up after discharge from hospital, skilled nursing facilities, or other healthcare facilities. Uh, this element should look familiar. You're, you're rendering this service, uh, as you know now, um, uh, perhaps with uh, home health involved with CTO um, being um, documented and uh, submitted or transition where there's a discharge, uh, the transition care management codes. This is also a reason, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit more in a, in a moment, why CMS will not pay for the, the chronic care management code during the same month that it pays for uh, either uh, CPO or the transition care management code. And again, we'll take a look at that in a little bit more detail. Beneficiary consent. The service um, realized that this is an out of sight, out of mind service uh, uh, with the non face to face services that are being um, uh, provided. So CMS is sensitive to that. There is a copayment, the 20% copayment responsibility, so that has not been um, uh, eliminated um, for this service. Uh, as a result, they did not want um, beneficiaries to receive uh, claims for uh, services for the copayment for services that they weren't clearly aware that were being offered and are necessary and that they've ag agreed to in advance. So we're going to inform the beneficiary of the availability of the chronic care management services and you know, your recommendation of why those be uh, re uh, rendered and why they're necessary. You're going to obtain the written agreement to have the services provided, including authorization for the electronic communication of medical information with other treating pro providers. We're going to document that in the, the beneficiary's medical record that all the, the chronic care management services were explained and, and offered. Uh, we're going to note the beneficiary's decision to accept or decline those uh, services. Uh, and then finally, we're going to inform the, the beneficiary of the right to stop the chronic care management services at any time. Um, that would be a, effective at the then current month uh, in which you're rendering those chronic care management services and the effect of the revocation on the chronic care management services, essentially meaning that if the beneficiary elects to no longer receive those services, that uh, you, you know, uh, you're not beholden, uh, in, in essence, to render those services while, while you may be doing those uh, for your own uh, you know, uh, sense of medical duty and professional duty. Um, from a CMS perspective, uh, you would no longer uh, have to do those if render those services if there's a revocation. If there is a revocation and there's a, a discussion and an opportunity to uh, renew the services, then that needs a um, you know a refreshed or a renewed or a, a new beneficiary consent established. There is no model form right now. Um, what I can do is put together uh, uh, sort of a template with these concepts and post them um, uh, to the Academy site and uh, let you know uh, when they're out there. I uh, may also uh, borrow some uh, elements or uh, concepts from the advanced beneficiary notice. Again, we're providing uh, the, the beneficiary and, and their caregivers with uh, that informed financial consent that, that they're uh, electing to receive a service and, and particularly one that they're not really, you know, uh, seeing, uh, seeing in person. I'm providing these uh, references from the final rule um, that, that the will post for for your resource. Um, it goes into more detail. This is a language of decision points um, um, uh, that, that CMS provided in the final rule of when that certified EHR is required. Again, the, the sort of the summary point is whenever the service references a health or medical record, and we did look at those specific uh, elements where it's required. Um, and again, uh, what is in these uh, next set of slides is that CMS discusses um, its decision and its uh, 
provision uh, in that area. Uh, another slide on the topic. And then, um, again, here one more. Uh, the, the bottom note is that um, HIPAA standards uh, continue to apply um, for the uh, exchange of the, the, the beneficiary's protected health information. And, and also that faxing is not considered uh, you know, an element that satisfies these uh, electronic uh, provisions. OK, the more specific service and claim requirements for the uh, service, uh, some of this will be a little bit more detailed of um, the elements that we just discussed. The service timing. We mentioned that this is going to be a, a, a month of service, a non-face-to-face -face service, a minimum of 20 minutes of service to render and document. Uh, at present, uh, CMS declined to provide for an add-on code or multiple use of the 99490. So if you're up to 21 minutes or 40 minutes or 80 minutes a month, um, uh, at, at present there isn't any additional opportunity. Uh, there is just that uh, one time uh, per beneficiary use of that code for that month. Also, um, to, uh, to, to kind of reinforce the point about that uh, beneficiary uh, uh, provider relationship, only one provider per month uh, uh, is eligible to submit the claim and or more importantly to be paid for that service per month and that's why uh, as with the transition care management code uh, you need that um, relationship and understanding of who's providing that chronic care management services um, you know established and documented and uh, agreed upon with the beneficiary uh, the beneficiary consent we we've, we've uh, discussed uh, we want to have that beneficiary consent in the the, the medical record the, the written or electronic copy provided to the beneficiary. Um, as mentioned, consent can be withdrawn and would require new consent to resume the services. Claim submission adjudication, uh, as mentioned, one provider claim per, per beneficiary per month submitted after each month of service. Uh, service is not required uh, to last over a uh, minimum number of months. Uh, if, if a beneficiary needs uh, chronic care management services uh, for a month, they, they need the the services and agreed upon them for a month. If uh, if uh, if it's a year-round um, uh, uh, medically necessary and agreed upon, well, then it's uh, 12 months of service. Um, and again, the service months can be uh, discontinuous, uh, and they can resume. resume. So this is not um, um, this is not an, an issue of um, uh, revocation. This is where. Uh, that the service, uh, things were going on with the patient's condition. Uh, you really had a lot of non, and your staff had a lot of non face-to-face uh, -face activity to, uh, to, to undertake. Uh, then the patient uh, stabilizes. Uh, there's less of that non face-to-face -face activity. And then something uh, uh, occurs, and, it, and uh, the requirement uh, resumes. OK, incident two. Um, as mentioned earlier, this has been revised. Uh, I think this is a great benefit to, 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 to patients and, and to, uh, to practices. It's been res res revised to permit non-face-to-face services to be rendered under general, not direct supervision uh, by you um, through your employed or non-employed staff. So no longer is there a requirement that somebody be a W-2 employee of yours to assist with some of that non-face-to-face -face, uh, care coordination. So, uh, the, and, and also they've mentioned uh, here in the final rule that this is also applying to the transition care management code as well. So those services provided by clinical staff incident to uh, your services uh, can be furnished under your general and not direct supervision. So of course uh, that individual uh, may be rendering those services, uh, following up with uh, home health, uh, prescriptions, um, uh, any range of services, uh, 24 hours, 24-7. Uh, and um, they're not going to be in the same physical location uh, as you are at the time. Also, um, the, 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 the professional that, that, that those services are being rendered incident to need not be uh, you. Um, it can be another uh, uh, professional in your uh, physician, nurse practitioner, PA in your, uh, in your practice. Again, as long as it relates to that care plan of that uh, uh, beneficiary. 
Uh, as we mentioned, uh, the clinical staff do not have to be your employees. Um, however, let's um, take a note, uh, look at the, this uh, item here. If you're in a team meeting, uh, there's, there's two, three, four, five individuals, uh, social work, psychologist, yourself, nurse care coordinators, uh, medical assistants, uh, et, et cetera, all uh, discussing and working uh, about the uh, issues uh, relating to the, 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 the patient, only the time of one of those individuals would be uh, countable, documentable, and countable, or at least countable, uh, from the documentation in the medical record. It would not be um, the, the, the services and the discussion of all two, three, four, or five, et cetera, during that team uh, meeting. So I uh, just want to, uh, again, bring that to, to our attention uh, and towards counting towards those uh, 20, uh, 20 minutes. And then otherwise, the usual documentation of services must be in the medical um, record. Um, realizing we're getting close to the 4 o'clock hour, I'm going to uh, keep going and, 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 and finish the material um, so that um, those of you who can uh, stay on can, can, can hear it. And again, the materials will be posted as well. And of course, we're always available for uh, you know, questions uh, by phone and uh, uh, email, et cetera. OK, we've talked about the du duplicative service uh, claim exclusion. A lot of these elements, as we reviewed, are similar to those of care plan oversight if a home health uh, or hospice is in, involved, and then um, also similarly with the transitional care management codes. So again, we're going to only have the opportunity to uh, uh, document and uh, submit a claim for one of these services uh, per that month. Uh, the total RVUs are provided here, the payment beginning next year. Um, this includes the 20% co-payment, so you're going to be receiving, this is a national number, um, again, uh, assuming that the uh, SDR issue is once again uh, fixed right after uh, April of next year, uh, $42.60 uh, for a physician, and uh, roughly speaking, $36.21 for a nurse practitioner and PA. 20% uh, of, of, of that, uh, roughly the $8 and $7 respectively, um, would be the, the beneficiary's responsibility. And again, that, that goes to that uh, beneficiary concept. Is the service involved in the primary care incentive program? It's not. Those were congressionally uh, listed group of ser even E&M services. Uh, and uh, this one is not. And also, um, unfortunately, the, the the, the PSIP program, primary care incentive program, excuse me, that many of you um, appreciate the benefits of uh, for recognizing your primary care services uh, is, is going away uh, or sunsetting at the end of uh, 2015. And again, until that time, uh, this service is not included in that uh, bonusing program. And in fact, on a conceptual basis, it's not written, uh, but was expressed to me that in some ways CMS uh, views chronic care management services as, in a, in a sense, a, a bit of a trade-off from uh, that program that had a uh, congressional life of the primary care incentive program. And now that this code's available, um, there was not the interest uh, or uh, initiative to uh, seek renewal of that, uh, the PCIP program. Uh, uh, a review of uh, chronic care management code, uh, transition care management code, and uh, CPO. Uh, the beneficiary practice requirements, we've discussed two chronic conditions or more for CCM. Uh, transition care management, as we know, um, r requires a, a, a discharge in the, the month of service, uh, and then the encounter uh, within seven or 14 days, depending on whether the uh, the, the, the patient and the medical decision making is moderate or of high complexity. Um, so those are requirements of TCM. CPO, of course, requ uh, requires the, the home health uh, involvement. Are the visits payable? Uh, distinct medically necessary visits? Uh, they are under uh, each of these uh, services, even beyond the encounter that's required is within the seven or 14 days for the TCM. The, the separately uh, rendered and required medically necessary services are uh, uh, submittable and payable. Uh, payment levels for each of the services are, again, just uh, uh, for, for uh, 
the ease of view provided here, uh, the $42 for the CCM. Uh, again, the moderate level within the 14 days for the TCM, the roughly the $180 on a national basis, 253 for the highly uh, complex uh, medical decision making and, and patient, and CPO roughly at the $118. So for the patients that, that um, aren't receiving, that are unstable, aren't receiving a TCM service or there's no discharge in the month, uh, there's no home health involvement, um, this is a benefit and, and does uh, you know, provide another opportunity and sort of rounds out the, the opportunity for home care medicine. Uh, practice revenue examples. Uh, what I've done here is uh, there, again, there isn't a minimum or a maximum. Um, it's really driven by the patient condition for the chronic care management uh, service. Um, so I've just provided some examples here of, of a beneficiary is receiving three months of service, four months of service, six months of service, or nine months of service a year uh, per patient, what that would look like uh, for a practice. You can see running across left to right. Then if there was 10 patients in your uh, patient population. Again, this is where discussions came up with uh, the office-based uh, providers of um, beneficiaries that meet this uh, service and how uh, frequently or infrequently it would be used. Um, so just some examples here of what if you had 10 patients receiving the service three times a year, or you know, one average, and of course it's gonna be a mix and of, of, of patients. Uh, if you had 30 patients uh, distributed across the three or four uh, to, to nine uh, months a year, et cetera. And then if you have a, a, a larger practice, uh, not too much TCM or home health involvement, but uh, the requirement of the, the patients, um, uh, the 50 patients, or perhaps more for larger practices, and the, the dollars, again, inclusive of the, the uh, beneficiary copayment that that represents on the uh, physician level. Okay, so Leaving our uh, discussion this afternoon that, of course, we can uh, uh, continue and, and go in, into more detail and answer questions in the future is what, what is our immediate to-do list then? We want to review the elements of the service. What can you provide now? What do you need to arrange? Um, you want to review your patient list population, which services, uh, as discussed, are eligible to receive this service, which patients are, um, are, are served already through CPO, and then transition care management is going to be on a um, on an occurrence basis uh, if a patient is is hospitalized. You want to develop that beneficiary consent uh, uh, template and tool and um, uh, policies and procedures. Um, I have not read that that it would be considered effective before the uh, the date of effect of the service. Um, so that while it's um, while uh, you develop it, um, I do not know that we, we don't have any information to indicate that it would be considered effective prior to the, uh, the, the, the date of the service coming into effect and the date of the month and, uh, you know, beginning the service that was explained to the beneficiary. Also want you to evaluate the health plan agreements. Um, I want you to, um, Okay, so after that beneficiary consent, I want you to evaluate your health plan agreements. Uh, again, as we mentioned uh, uh, last month or so in the uh, health plan and contractual webinar, that there is the recognition of, uh, the, the, and it should be the case under HIPAA, but that you have the, the contractual protection that the, the new services that, that Medicare adopts and pays um, are you used as the benchmarking, so you want to see that um, the CCM will be covered and paid. And again, if it's a, a function of a percentage of the Medicare fee schedule, that, that, that conversation is had before uh, 2015. Okay, this, um, this discussion, um, I just wanted to, 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 to quickly indicate the, the, the value. Uh, this is the value-based team of modifier for your academy relationship. Um, yeah, the number of patients at uh, 99349, um, where that would pay for academy membership and also attendance at the annual meeting. Uh, for physicians, that's um, uh, the, the, the beginning of uh, the, the year next year. Um, so we think that we're uh, hopefully providing a value uh, for you here at the academy um, in terms of sort of a translation into number of, uh, of visits, established visits. 
Next slide um, uh, did, does that for the uh, physicians and nurse practitioners. Next couple of slides, just want to, as a reminder that the, the move towards more of a risk-based um, and, and value-based uh, payment uh, environment, uh, that's, that's evidenced by the value-based payment modifier, the chronic care management codes, et cetera. Um, we talked about this a little bit uh, last month. Uh, we will again in the future and also at the annual meeting. Uh, and, and these slides are available as we move from uh, fee-for-service and volume-based to the, the value-based and the bundle payments. Okay, CMS uh, has announced a transforming uh, clinical practice initiative. There's two uh, large elements uh, to this multi-million dollar uh, initiative. Uh, one is practice uh, networks that they'll pay grants to help to transform to more uh, value and risk-based uh, practices and then for uh, an academy or association, uh, medical association involvement, uh, support and alignment networks opportunities, and we'll be communicating to you more about uh, these in the uh, well, over the next few weeks. Uh, the, the the grant applications are available and open on the uh, CMS site, and applications are due January six. Okay, more information on that. Uh, the theory behind uh, the, tra the uh, practice transformation uh, concepts here. Okay, I uh, just want to show you in a chart form here. Again, um, we've established the 99, and we, this is where the, the academy is working for you. Um, we've had of established the 99490 for uh, effect 2015. Um, complex chronic care management for the uh, more extensive patients and time. Uh, not adopted for next year, but we're working on that column. And then, of course, the alternative payment model um, for all the services and, 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 and teamwork that's involved um, in, in your services. So these are uh, elements that we're working for you. Okay, what's going away? I do want to mention to you that, that um, the Affordable Care Act did have uh, Medicaid rates going up to Medicare rates across the country. Uh, that should have been in effect for 2013 and 14. I um, want to see that if you receive those from a straight uh, Medicaid uh, payment perspective. Um, so take a look if you have any uh, straight Medicaid patients. Um, as mentioned, the primary care incentive program uh, is sunsetting at the end of 2015. Um, but your services uh, will be counted through 15 uh, to be paid in uh, 16, et cetera. Home health. A couple quick um, highlights uh, here. Uh, that CMS provided in its uh, final rule. Um, the narrative requirement of the face-to-face -face encounter uh, is going away. The, the encounter, the face-to-face -face encounter uh, requirement stays. It's just that standalone um, a piece of documentation that, that was known as the narrative uh, will no longer be required uh, as of 2015. Um, however, I do want to let you know that if a home health services require, is denied, uh, based on lack of uh, medical justification for the home health services, uh, that they will consider the, the certification to be uh, denied as well. Also, a last element that uh, here to highlight that a certification is uh, effective any time a new start of care assessment is, is, is completed to initiate care. So if someone on home health goes into the hospital and then um, you're ordering distinct or different home health based on different diagnoses or and then that group of reasons that the patient is discharged and requires, that that would be another um, certification, not a recertification, but a new uh, certification requiring a face-to-face -face encounter, and that would uh, continue to be paid. Uh, the face-to-face -face encounters are continuing to be, to be paid. So this is a uh, summary uh, slide of those uh, highlights. Um, I Impact Act, uh, just real briefly, want, want to mention that Something that uh, um, Congress did uh, did pass uh, uh, recently uh, is, is called the Impact Act. It wants to uh, start to standardize um, the measures uh, across the post-acute settings. Um, they have instructed CMS to, to work on that over the next few years. They are also going to collect uh, cost information. Um, in the later years, this is to lead to a unified payment system or model recommended to them. Uh, to Congress uh, to pay for uh, post-acute services at, at a uniform rate regardless of site of service. We want to make sure that 
the academy involvement and your involvement is uh, in this process in the best interest of the, the beneficiaries um, and, and the resulting payment system. OK, so um, what to do for you to do to get ready for next uh, year, and, and what are we working on? We're working on the issues that we really began the, uh, the webinar about, the, the risk-adjusted payment uh, model, the chronic care management services, and, and what flows from those, the value-based payment modifier, uh, getting you paid for advanced care planning, uh, et cetera, IEH, uh, and SDR fix at the bottom, the home health-related uh, services, and um, uh, keeping an eye on the IMPACT Act. Uh, these, all of these uh, issues should increase uh, patient access and certification, satisfaction, um, development of uh, the home care medicine workforce and your professional satisfaction, and provide payer benefits and cost uh, savings. OK, what do we need from, from you? We, we need your support. Um, those of you who have just received uh, membership renewals, uh, renew, add members, uh, move from individual status to group membership. Um, we like ask for your attention to the matching uh, gift campaign uh, so solicitation you likely just received uh, to respond in the form of donation. Um, we appreciate your participation in task forces and, and work groups. Also, to uh, in the, 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 the line that information is power, we do need um, response to data requests and, and surveys, and appreciate those of you who. Um, uh, provide us that that information to to support your uh, uh, services, uh, both from an advocacy perspective and also in the, in the, the marketplace for products and services. Relating to that, um, the annual meeting support. Um, please let us know those uh, companies or services you recommend you think would benefit your colleagues, both locally and around the the, the, the country. Let us know if you have a strong relationship, uh, purchasing and uh, partnership relationship, service relationship with that company or, or uh, professional organization. Um, and uh, please encourage them uh, to, to support the field, uh, the good work that you are doing and your colleagues around the country through supporting the, the annual meeting through sponsorship uh, or exhibiting, and then also um, benefiting themselves through an increased uh, marketplace. And then, of course, we want to see everybody in uh, May. Uh, and please bring uh, others in your practice. We'll work to uh, update, uh, for example, this new service, uh, the compendium of uh, services. Uh, uh, already, it needs a revision. And so that will be available uh, at the annual meeting. Again, the, the highlights from the annual meeting. And uh, please, if you're able to stay on, uh, let us know of questions. And if there's anything that um, we can't do uh, right now based on uh, information at hand and top of mind, we will get back to you and then, again, post uh, these questions. Uh, originating sites of service, um, uh, there is a list that we can uh, uh, publish. Uh, this relates to the telehealth services. That is a congressional uh, designation of what they would have approved as where the beneficiary is located and where that telehealth uh, communication is is originating. So whether it's a film, whether it's seeing the patient um, um, through you know video, etc. Where is that imaging that 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 those pieces of information um, being sent? That is the originating set site and, again, where the beneficiary is located. Uh, clinical staff. Um, I would consider the, the, the term clinical staff as those who are now uh, eligible or regulated by your state uh, scope of practice uh, and, and within practice parameters uh, in the community to document and to be recognized in the medical record. So if that's an RN, um, MSW, uh, MA, et cetera, um, that would be the, the designation of uh, uh, clinical staff in terms of the chronic care management uh, code. Uh, how often do you need to provide the, the patient care plan? Um, well, you're going to be establishing that, that patient care plan as you do now, um, you know, initially uh, in, in seeing the patient if it uh, needs uh, updating um, or revision. Uh, 
you know that occurs uh, as as necessary. Um, in terms of the physical or elect and electronically giving that to the beneficiary, that would be the one time uh, in effect to have met the requirement for that in uh, beneficiary consent to satisfy that that um, uh, period of, of uh, beneficiary consent for that chronic care man uh, management service. So if there's a care plan in effect for a year that you are sort of monitoring, updating, um, the beneficiary has signed the note and has an, um, the informed consent and hasn't revoked it during the year, uh, that could be an annual event. Uh, EHR requirement to participate in the, the, the chronic care management um, program. Um, yes, there is that electronic health record requirement in those areas as designated. If if someone is a um, providing services, uh, chronic care management services, external, let's say, to the practice, they need to see the, the uh, for the time to count, they, they would need to see that care plan. Um, they do not have to be sitting on the same system. They, they would, could be viewing it electronically uh, via another system. However, in, for those elements that we discussed, for their time to be counted towards the 20 minutes, then, then that has to be a feature and documented in, in that certified EHR, um, again, particular to those elements that um, are required to be uh, to, to, to require the, the certified EHR. Um, unfortunately, we, we, we and others did ask for uh, an exception uh, process. There is no uh, exception process to those EHR requirements for the chronic care management uh, service. Um, how often do we need to obtain the consent? Again, uh, absent change and absent revocation. Um, I think the one time per year would uh, suffice. Uh, written agreement for CCM is required for CPO. No, um, uh, again, with um, this uh, being uh, so, well, we're actually directly and specifically a non-face-to-face -face, uh, service um, and new for um, CMS, they wanted to be careful that um, of, of, of beneficiary uh, response. Uh, they also want to uh, be aware from uh, uh, directly from a fraud and abuse perspective that beneficiaries are informed of the service and they're aware of they're receiving the service so that when they see their uh, Medicare uh, explanation of benefits and when they receive a, a bill from you, your office or your revenue cycle uh, organization for that uh, co-payment in, uh, amount that they're aware that or and their caregivers are aware that that service uh, has been agreed upon and um, well that, that that's been agreed upon and uh, again there's going to be that good faith or that um, you know experiential uh, uh, effect that that they're really receiving the service okay let's see if there's other the duplicate Duplicate claim exclusion. Does this mean if a patient's receiving home health services, they cannot be billed? Well, they can be billed for the CPO, but again, in the same month, because the the underlying uh, services, particularly the non-face-to-face, were considered duplicative, you can bill for the uh, the CPO, um, which would pay more, uh, as properly uh, rendered and, and fulfilled and documented and submitted. Um, so the, that would um, uh, be appropriate uh, versus um, billing for the CCM service. Uh, but you can't bill for both. And um, uh, however, if the patient, if you have patients that are not receiving home health and haven't received a discharge, for example, from the hospital in that month, where the TCM um, would would uh, be reasonable and appropriate, then um, then then that's what you would do. But again, you cannot um, uh, submit a claim for. Uh, any two of the three services in the same month. Uh, if if medical assistance can uh, uh, can can document in, in uh, medical records, and their services are are a part of your medical records, um, that time um, should count for the nine nine four nine zero. 
can we build TCM and CCM in the same month? Uh, that was, uh, we cannot. Clarification, if a bill uh, 99490 and a provider from a different group bills um, the G code, will one or the other get denied? Uh, interesting uh, question. Um, do not see any information that either um, from a separate TIN would, would uh, be denied um, because, again, it's not the same provider uh, billing for two of those uh, services uh, for that beneficiary in the, 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 the same month. The language, uh, again, this is a, actually a very interesting question. So the language um, ties back to each specific service. So for example, the TCM says only one provider, uh, it, it, you know, in the universe in the world of uh, providers for that beneficiary per month. Uh, um, they don't talk about TCM in one group and then CPO in another group. So um, I do not see that cross-referencing um, uh, occur. I'll keep my eyes open to it. Um, but I do not see an exclusion or I do not see any language that, that expressly says that the um, chronic care management from one practice and um, CPO service from another practice um, can, you know, w would not be submittable and, and payable. Again, um, uh, let's be aware of our relationships with beneficiaries and um, um, with the Medicare funds and, and, and the taxpayers. With the final rule um, of CCM, is there a requirement for annual uh, wellness visit? Uh, great question. When the proposed rule came out um, and its uh, uh, successors, uh, actually it's its predecessors, uh, there was the concept that an annual wellness visit to establish that understanding uh, of the patient's uh, uh, needs, history, uh, social history, so, uh, background, et cetera, would need to uh, occur for uh, chronic care management service to uh, to, to be rendered and to be paid. Um, the, 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 the organized medicine provider community did not think that that was um, appropriate or, or made sense, and Medicare has re removed that requirement for the annual wellness visit. H however, I would, would uh, make the footnote here that, again, the annual wellness visit um, is available to the to beneficiaries in the home and assisted living facilities. and um, Again, while it's removed as a requirement, um, there is still discussion of, um, of its utility and the information it provides to you in the development of uh, your care plan. So again, it's, it's available as a uh, standalone service. It's also available um, with the modifier or, uh, if there is a, uh, a medically necessary visit. Um, that, that occurs on the same time uh, with the use of the 25 uh, modifier. So you you do not need to have, to more directly answer the question, you do not have to have conducted an annual wellness visit in order to then um, render, document, and submit a claim for the CCM service. Um, that opportunity is available, but it's not a requirement. Okay, I think that's... Um, that actually, can we to, uh, post a template for home care assessment on the site? Uh, um, we we can provide references to the to the webinar materials and to what um, is, is considered uh, the assessment according to those uh, across those different dimensions. Um, so the answer is uh, yes to that. Can you build the CCM if you've seen that patient in the past 30 days? Oh yeah, again, the, the chronic care management service is uh, is is a standalone service. Um, medically necessary uh, evaluation and management services during the same month can be um, rendered and uh, should be should be rendered, uh, documented, and then uh, submitted. Again, this is a, an additional. This is a recognition and coverage and payment for your non face to face uh, services. Uh, um, there isn't a uh, discussion or limitation of uh, medically necessary evaluation and management services during that same uh, month.
Um, there are two programs. Uh, there's a, a question about a specific question about, um, and I will post an, a, a template for the consent. Um, one thing I did not mention: there are two uh, sort of prepaid or uh, programs under uh, uh, Medicaid, uh, Medi excuse me, Medicare waivers, um, where there's some prepayment that, again, uh, uh, Medicare thought that uh, payment would be duplicative. Uh, those are two uh, specific uh, 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 programs um, we, we can identify um, that have some capitation involved. And if you're not in one of those two programs, uh, then, then Medicare will, you know, receive and uh, cover and pay the, the CCM services. I uh, hope this was uh, helpful. Again, uh, that uh, we'll see everybody in May of next year. Um, thank you for your, your, your membership, uh, your renewal, your support of the fundraising campaign, uh, the, the questions and inter interest this afternoon. And again, if you have other questions, um, please let us know. Uh, have a great afternoon. Thank you.